Hi guys, sometimes I get questions about which is better for a rubber band powered car, a big wheel or a small wheel. Now there's lots of answers because it depends on what you're trying to do. So if we're just looking at acceleration, then with this little diagram that I'm drawing here, I should be able to give you an answer. We have to make quite a few assumptions. First of all, we'll assume that the mass of the car is going to be the same regardless of whether we've got big wheels or small wheels. Now in the real world, that's probably not right. You'll probably find your bigger wheels are heavier than your smaller wheels. But to make the maths easy, we'll assume the mass remains the same. We'll also assume that the rubber band is going to be the same in both cases. So the force or the power is going to be constant or the same in both cases. Then we've got the friction between the wheel and the ground. Again, that's going to change depending on what sort of wheels you're using. But for the purpose of the maths, we'll assume that's going to be the same in both cases. So the only thing that's changing is the radius of the wheel. We'll assume that the hub or the axle is going to be the same in both cases because you need to make the maths as easy as possible. So we've got the power of the rubber band, we've got the mass of the car, we've got the friction and we've got the radius of the hub is going to be the same in all cases. So the thing that's going to change is going to be the radius of the wheel. And the best way that I can explain which is going to give you the best acceleration is to consider the radius of the hub and the radius of the wheel as levers. And you're trying to use one lever to move the other lever. The hub is a short lever and the wheel is a long lever. Now I'm going to try and simplify this. So I apologize if you can't follow my logic here, but I've already explained that there's quite a few things that are going to be constant in both situations. So we can virtually ignore them. The things that's going to change, or the only thing that's going to change, is the length of the long lever the radius of the wheel. So if we take these two levers that I'm talking about and join them together and have the joining point being the centre of the axle, then the mass of the car is going to sit on the far end of the long lever and the power or the force of the rubber band is going to go against the end of the short lever. And you should fairly quickly be able to see that if you've got a long, long lever, it's going to need more force against the short lever than a short, long lever. So I hope that explains it. If it takes less force, then the car is going to accelerate quicker. So a small wheel car will accelerate quicker. There's lots of other things you need to consider, but if it's just acceleration you're looking at, then a small wheel will get you going faster. Some of the other things you need to think about. A small wheel covers less distance for each rotation than a big wheel. So if you're using the same length rubber band and you're putting the same number of turns on the axle, a small wheeled car is going to go a shorter distance under power than a big wheeled car. 
other things you may need to think about is friction, the grip on the ground. A small wheeled car will have a smaller footprint touching the ground compared to a big wheeled car. So a big wheeled car will have more grip. So small wheeled car is likely to get wheel spin when you accelerate. And that's not going forwards, that's just spinning the wheels. So you lose distance that way. So th there's lots of other things you need to consider. That's all I'm saying there.